Hey, what's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we are celebrating. Today marks the second year anniversary of this channel. The second birthday of this baby. And what better way to celebrate it than with the Q&A that I've been promising you guys for so long. You guys send over some gaming questions, some YouTube questions, and some that are maybe too personal to even share. But hey, today I'm an open book and I'm here to deliver. And I just wanna thank you all from the bottom of my heart for being a part of this channel, for tagging along through the highs and lows, through the suffering and the laughs. It's been a wild ride and I wouldn't have been able to do it without you guys. Last time we did a Q&A was when we hit 7,000 and now we're closing in on 25,000. So there's a lot of new faces and I'm excited to kind of connect with you guys on a deeper level. But before we get into the Q&A, a lot of you guys have been asking me for an update on my desk setup, my gaming setup. So I wanna give a massive shout out to Flexi spot for sending me my very own standing desk. I've been using it for about two weeks now. This is the E5 Pro standing desk with a bamboo tabletop. It's about 78 by 30 inches, which allows me to put so much stuff on it. The max weight capacity is about 300 pounds. It also comes with this nice keypad that allows me to adjust to whichever height that I want and also set it as a preset. So I don't actually have to adjust it every single time. I just hit a button and we're right where we need it. So that's currently what I'm working with. I absolutely love it. So again, massive thanks to FlexiSpot. If you wanna get yourself one, you can always use the link in my description. It'll always be there. And without further ado, let's get into the Q&A. What games will you play when you finish the From Software games. Yeah, so we're actually very near the end, the From Software catalog, which is which is very sad, but we still have Demon Souls next, which I will be playing here on the channel. I hope you guys are excited for that. I'm gonna be playing Liza P very soon, which is kind of similar to Bloodborne in a way, as well as Sekiro. We also have Lords of the Fallen, which is kind of like Dark Souls, and then Black Myth Wukong looks really awesome. Again, kind of like Sekiro. But aside from Souls likes, I wanna play a lot of games, man. There's so many franchises out there that I want to tap into. You guys have recommended so many games. Some that come to mind are Subnautica, the God of War franchise. There's also the Neo games that a lot of you guys recommended, Neo 1 and Neo 2, another Souls-like that seems pretty freaking awesome. Eventually, I want to do some like older games. There's so many games out there that I want to play, but so many little hours in the day. It's, it's kind of sad, but we'll get to all of them. What other languages do you speak apart from English? Yeah, so English is actually my second language language and to all of you that have made fun of me for my reading abilities when it comes to item descriptions I hope you feel really bad right now <laughs> I'm joking but yeah my first language is actually Spanish I was actually born in a very small town in Venezuela <laughs> Surprise. I lived there till I was about 12 years old and then my parents decided to move to Canada, which is where I've been ever since. We live in Ottawa, which is the capital of Canada. A lot of people actually don't know that. They think it's Toronto. <laughs> it says a lot about the city. I like it, but it gets a lot of rep for being very boring compared to, to other major cities. I actually didn't know English when I moved to Canada and those were like some of the darkest years of my life. Having to go to school in grade eight, like not knowing how to communicate with with anyone not really having any friends i was kind of like the weird kid that everyone wanted to like be around for the first like week and a half because it was like oh this is a spanish kid doesn't speak any english and then you know eventually they all kind of leave <laughs> but everyone was really nice eventually i kind of picked up on the language obviously we're communicating in english so i think i learned a thing or two every time that i like doubt myself that i can't do something i just remember what my 12 year old self did and the shit that he had to go through, it just pushes me forward, man. Like you learn so much when you move to a new country and you don't know the language. And honestly, it's terrifying, but it, it's so rewarding. I know I just went on a crazy tangent, but hey, that's what we're here for, getting to know each other. If you've had a similar experience, let me know down below. I'd love to talk about that. Let's move on to the next question. So I'm not here for like seven hours. <laughs> so Martin Smith, you've been here for a while, man. I really appreciate you. He wants to know if I would like to have children in the future with my wife. Um, <laughs> well, I don't have a wife at the moment, but eventually, you know, if the stars align and maybe the world is in a better place, I think I would, yeah, I would definitely like to have children. I think it'd be really cool and fulfilling in the, in the long run, you know, getting old and having people to look after you. I think that's kind of cool. <laughs> no, nah, but in all honesty, I think I would definitely love to have kids with the right person. I would love to show them like all my favorite movies and games and just like, I don't know. I feel like that's a really special part of life. But honestly, sometimes I watch these videos online of like parents with like their newborn and how they like cry for like eight hours a night and it costs so much money and 
you know, you start to question things, but I think I'm still a bit too young to even think about that kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, w one day, maybe. Who knows? Maybe one day I'll be doing family vlogs. <laughs> no, no. All right, so next question comes from Shadow Man, who's been here for so long, and I appreciate you. His question is, are the plans for streaming still up? Woo. Yeah, streaming is a big, a big thing, a big project. Something that I definitely want to do uh, when the time is right. I'm not going to lie, the thought of streaming sometimes like makes me a little bit nervous, but I feel like we can do it. It's just like really time consuming in a way, but at the same time, it saves a lot of time because we could, instead of me sitting down for three hours and then editing for a long time, I could just like do a stream, but I genuinely really love to edit. It's kind of a battle that I've had in my head for a really long time, but if you guys want me to stream, obviously let me know down below. Um, I know some people are fans of live streams. Some people like the recorded episodes. There's also the question of, you know, what I stream on YouTube, what I stream on Twitter, do I go to these other weird sites like kick? <laughs> I don't know. Part of me, I think would really love to do Twitch just because the whole like copyright music situation on YouTube, I would love to like have my music on live streams, but it's also not a big deal. I might just end up doing live streams on YouTube. I'm not hundred percent yet, but the plans are still up. I definitely want to do it one day. I just got to like mentally prepare. Maybe I'll do a live stream with all of the channel members. So it's a smaller audience. You know, you guys can kind of watch me be nervous, but at the same time, I feel like, I feel like I could do it. I honestly think it would be so much fun to talk to you guys on like real time. I think it's so special. I'm going to do it before the end of the year. Okay. That I'm going to set myself that date. Actually, no, I'm not going to. That's kind of scary. <laughs> I'm going to try and do it soon, guys. I will, I will keep you posted to all my channel members. I'll probably be doing a test stream with you guys. Yeah, I think it's time. Next question comes from just Ali. Uh, my question is what's your top five TV shows? That's crazy. My number one TV show would definitely have to be The Sopranos. That show to me is one of the greatest pieces of media ever created. I think James Gandolfini is one of the greatest actors to ever live. May he rest in peace. My number two, probably Breaking Bad, which is kind of funny. I think that Tony Soprano walks so Walter White could run one of those situations, but I still love it to pieces. I'm a big fan of Game of Thrones as well. Even though the last season of Game of Thrones absolutely sucked, still has a very big piece of my heart. I would definitely have to throw The Office in there as well, which is kind of funny because just Ali has a picture of Dwight <laughs> as her profile picture. I mean, I've probably seen it like five or six times, like beginning to end, probably even more than that. I think it's one of the greatest comedies ever made right next to Parks and Recreation. I've obviously seen Friends. I wouldn't put it in my top five, but you know, honorable mention to Friends, Prison Break, first three seasons of The Walking Dead, Dexter. <sighs> what else, man? I'm really loving Ahsoka right now. That last episode from this week, like one of the best pieces of Star Wars that I've seen in years, literally brought me to tears. I'm a big fan of Band of Brothers as well. HBO series on World War II. Big fan of Love Island too, <laughs> not gonna lie. <laughs> I love Black Mirror as well. I think I'd probably put Black Mirror in my top five, like the first five seasons, I believe. Uh, when it was like the UK Black Mirror. Man, there was this British TV show called Skins that I very much enjoyed in my teenage years. That one has a very big place in my heart as well. SpongeBob, Drake and Josh. <laughs> I hope that answers your question. I gave you way more than five, but you get the picture. All right, next question comes from Joy Boy. Will you ever finish the frigid outskirts? No, absolutely not. I will never ever go back to that place in my life. To anyone that doesn't know what the frigid outskirts is, is a level in Dark Souls 2 DLC that just absolutely sucks. And I'm not a Dark Souls 2 hater, but it just sucks. And the reward at the end is not even great. It's a horrible boss. It's a terrible, terrible boss. God, I'm getting pissed just thinking about it. But he has a second part to this question. What is your favorite Soulsborne game so far? Oh boy. Well, guys, we have gone through Elden Ring. We've gone through Bloodborne, Dark Souls 1, Dark Souls 2, Dark Souls 3 and Sekiro Shadows Die twice. I have not played Demon Souls, but I can still have my ranking here. I will give it to you right now. I feel like a lot of you guys won't be surprised about this, but it still remains as Bloodborne. Bloodborne is still my favorite Soulsborne game. Even after playing all the Dark Souls, Sekiro, Elden Ring, Bloodborne is still my number one, my baby. Coming at number two, I would probably have to say Oh God, I haven't even thought about this, dude. Now that we've played Dark Souls 3 and Sekiro, like those two are so strong. And Elden Ring, oh. All right, here's my Soulsborne ranking. Number one, we have Bloodborne. 
Number two. We have Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice. Number three, we have... <laughs> Number three, we have Dark Souls 3. Number four, we have Elden Ring. Then Dark Souls 1, then Dark Souls 2. I think that's my ranking. <laughs> Although I have to mention, Elden Ring was my first game. It was my first introduction to the FromSoft Souls-like genre. So I feel like if I were to play it now with all of my new experience and my appreciation for the style of gameplay, I think Elden Ring has the chance to be number two. I, I think so. But we'll have to do a second playthrough one day. Maybe we'll stream Elden Ring uh, before the DLC comes out. I feel like that would be super fun, but yeah. That's where it stands right now. Bloodborne, Sekiro, Dark Souls 3, Elden Ring, Dark Souls 1, Dark Souls 2. It's crazy to rank them though, cause like all these games are like super fucking good. Like they are so much better than so many games out there. And like putting them in a rank kind of like makes it seem like, you know, Dark Souls 1 being the second last is a bad game, but no, it's a fucking amazing game. You know, it's like, same with Elden Ring being fourth. Like, what? <laughs> a lot of you guys have been wanting to hear my ranking, and there it is. All right, next question comes from Questionable Zoomer. What are some of your favorite games that you haven't talked about or played on the channel? Some of my favorite games. Holy crap. Well, I feel like a lot of you guys don't know this, but growing up, I was a massive, massive fan of the Gears of War series. Gears of War 2, specifically, that game like changed my life. <laughs> okay, that's a little bit extreme, but I was obsessed with Gears of War 2, man. I would play it co-op with my cousin, like back to back. It was so much fun. To this day, it's probably still in my top 10 favorite games of all time. I would definitely love to revisit it one day. There's this one game that I also love to pieces, and that is Mafia 2. <laughs> I know it's probably so surprising to you guys. I put so many hours into that game when I was a kid. The ending to this day fucking puts me to tears, bro. I haven't played that game in years. I actually have it on the 360. It's still staring at me over there. I would love to maybe one day do a playthrough of that game. Another favorite of mine would definitely have to be Batman Arkham Asylum. Um, that game, I just, again, I put so many hours into it. I was addicted to it. Maybe one day we'll play the Batman series. That's the only one that I've played, but maybe one day we can, you know, do a series on those. I was a big fan of the Halo games as well. Uh, Halo Reach, Halo 3, the Skate games. I don't know if you guys know Skate, Skate 2 and 3, man. Again, so many hours spent on those. Honorable mention to Kingdom Hearts 2, GTA San Andreas, GTA 5, Bully, Resident Evil 4, the Assassin's Creed games. Man, I haven't played those in so long. Man, there's just so many games. <laughs> there's so many games. All right, guys, next question comes from Sam, who's been here for so long. Sam, I appreciate you, man. Maybe this is too early of a question to ask, but is your family going to be understanding and supportive of your future full-time YouTube career path? Because it's so happening for you. I feel like it will mean so much more to have family behind it. What a great question, man. Um, well, I love how you're assuming that, you know, I'll become a full-time YouTuber one day, uh, which I, I mean, I would absolutely love. It's definitely my dream. For those that don't know, I actually have a full-time job already. I work for a marketing agency uh, Monday to Friday as a graphic designer and video editor, which is, you know, one of the reasons why I can't upload as much as I would like to, but I love my job so much. I love the people and uh, I want to do a good job at it. So sometimes I have to, you know, balance my life a little bit. Um, but when it comes to YouTube, is my family going to be understanding and supportive? Man, well, Sam, I got to tell you, my family are like my biggest supporters ever. I was very blessed to have such amazing parents. Sometimes they don't really understand it, but I keep them up to date. They're constantly asking me how it's doing. I've told myself that I won't even think about, you know, becoming a full-time YouTuber till we hit like 100,000 subscribers. Maybe around that time, I'll be like considering it, but I really appreciate the stability that my current job gives me. So yeah, it might be a little bit too early to even think about going full time, but it is definitely my dream. And uh, if you guys continue to watch and support, then you know maybe we can make that dream come to a reality and I can give you guys daily videos. <laughs> that would be awesome. All right, next question comes from Cheesy Peasy. <laughs> nice. Why did you start YouTube and did you think you would get this big? <laughs> well, first of all, I don't think I'm that big in all honesty. For two years, I think we're doing all right. I definitely didn't think to have almost 25,000 followers uh, in two years. I honestly didn't think anyone would <laughs> ever watch. At least for the first like six months, that was like, that just felt so impossible. But you just got to keep at it. Why did I start YouTube? Well, 
I don't know. <laughs> no, I think I do. All right, so a bit of a warning here because this might get a little dark, but uh, I started doing YouTube because I was in a really shitty place. It was during the pandemic. I had just gone out of a relationship. I lost my job. I lost my grandma. I lost my uncle. Uh, it was a really dark period. <laughs> and uh, I just needed like an escape. I had been watching a lot of like gaming YouTubers, uh, one of them being Hollow. He kept me entertained for so long and I figured maybe I could do this uh, to others while also having fun. While I was in college, I wasn't really gaming and I realized that I missed it so much. So I went ahead and I bought myself a PS5 um, I got me a little monitor and uh, I figured why not let's give it a shot let's try and make something out of all these hours that I'm gonna spend playing games anyways like let's just try and do something with it I had been trying to do YouTube my whole life you guys know this I've had many failed channels but for some reason I never thought of gaming I gave it a shot and six months later we started playing Elden Ring and a lot of you guys started flooding in which made it all even more exciting and uh we just kind of kept going so yeah that's why I started YouTube and you guys are the reason why I'm still doing YouTube so Appreciate you. Next question comes from Chris, another paid member. Really appreciate you. Are there any content creators? Oh, that's actually funny. I just answered this. Are there any content creators you look up to or who give you inspiration? Yeah, so I just mentioned uh, Hollow. I have been watching Hollow for quite a long time now. He definitely got me through some hard times. Uh, PewDiePie, I've been watching PewDiePie since before I even moved to Canada. Before I even knew English, I was watching PewDiePie, which is fucking crazy. Who else? Who else? Who else? Man, I watch a lot of YouTube, but I don't know if I would call them like inspiration or people that I look up to because that's another thing every creator is kind of on their own journey so I don't really like to compare myself to other channels I've done that in the past and it's just not very healthy you kind of get into this like loop of like oh they're doing this and I'm doing this or they're getting this many views and I'm, I try and stay away from that but I enjoy a lot of different channels oh Star Wars Theory I've been watching him since like the very start I don't miss a video obviously I'm a huge Star Wars fan <laughs> just seeing him grow and uh, seeing how true he stays to himself of course, I could sit here and say Mr. Beast because obviously Mr. Beast, biggest YouTuber on the face of the planet. Do I really look up to him? I mean, sure. He does a lot of good for the world. Maybe one day I would love to do one tiny fraction of that. Uh, that would be pretty cool. I really fuck with I'm Dante. Uh, I've been watching him for a while too. I also watch a lot of Asmongold. Um, I think he's fucking hilarious. I started watching him when he was doing his uh, Johnny Depp uh, trial reactions and uh, I've been watching him ever since, man. Same with Moist Critical. Like he's definitely the biggest, best source of news and drama on the internet and he's so entertaining. Something about these uh, dudes with beards, long hair and white t-shirts is they just do something to me, you know? Again, I don't look at them as inspiration, but they definitely push me to, you know, make more videos and wanting to be more entertaining and just it's a uh, it's a lot of fun being in this space because you get to see what a lot of people are doing and that in a way inspires you a little bit. No name 772 FP would like to know what was the moment that you realized? Yes, I can do this and be successful at it. I actually have two moments in the channel where I had this feeling and funny enough, it was right after pressing that stop recording button after I filmed my very first video, which is still up on the channel. I remember it vividly like it was two years ago. Exactly. <laughs> As soon as I pressed stop recording on that video, I just had this giant smile on my face. I don't know what it was, man, but I just felt like I finally found something. I remember like opening my door and like my parents were just standing there because they were just coming into the house. And like, I remember vividly just telling them like, holy shit, like I just found my thing. Like I just like, this is what I want to do. And they were just like, what? <laughs> they had no idea what the fuck I was doing. And then the second moment was, oh man, when the Elden Ring video started taking off. The first episode of Elden Ring, um, funny enough, I was not gonna continue that game, uh, at least online. Uh, I found it so incredibly challenging and it did not cross my head that I could finish that game, especially while doing episodes on YouTube. But as soon as I started seeing those numbers rise and the comments started to show up, people saying how hilarious it was, how painful to watch it was, just seeing people's reaction to that video, like just sparked something in me. And uh, I remember just like refreshing my page and just seeing like, holy fuck, like it's got like 30 comments now, like what? <laughs> that was definitely the first big push on the channel and that's where all of it started. I felt the need to do a part two, you know, give the people what they want and we just kind of continued on. But that first episode of Elden Ring was definitely the moment where I definitely saw myself 
doing this for a long time and uh if it wasn't for that video taking off like i maybe i would still be stuck at zero subscribers you know like who knows right like who knows man like a lot of this youtube shit is like a lot of it is luck i'm not gonna lie but once you get lucky that's when the hard work starts and that's where you gotta like put your foot down and just full throttle that shit luckily for me i absolutely fell in love with the game and then fell in love even more with the other games that we started playing so i felt like i was never stuck in a box you know a lot of creators like one video pops off and then they feel the need to do more of that like they should but they don't actually enjoy it and they just keep doing that for months years and they end up in a really bad place so i feel extremely lucky that that was the video that took off because it gave me the opportunity to not only play all these amazing games but grow the channel and connect with all of you guys and find a new passion in fromsoft and souls like so yeah i hope that answers your question no name 772 fp <laughs> all right reapy would like to know if i could have one game remade what would that game be? There was this one Lord of the Rings game that I played so much as a kid, and that was Lord of the Rings Conquest. I think that game nowadays would, oh man, if they remade that shit, like I would become a Lord of the Rings gaming channel. <laughs> uh, Bloodborne, of course, we would love to get a remastered or a remake, that shit would be amazing. Oh, here's a fun one. What's your favorite weapon from any game? Mine would have to be the Glove of Doom from the Ratchet and Clank games. Great choice. The Lancer. The Lancer in Gears of War 2 with the saw underneath. I fucking love that thing, man. Maybe the Energy Sword from Halo. That's a classic. The Keyblade from Kingdom Hearts is pretty iconic. And obviously, I gotta throw the saw cleaver in there from Bloodborne and probably Ludwig's Holy Blade. Yeah. John Michael would like to know, what was the thing about Dark Souls 2 that made you enjoy it considering where it stands amongst the Soulsborne community? Well, I definitely think Dark Souls 2 is the weakest out of the bunch, in my humble opinion, but there's definitely a lot to be enjoyed, and I feel like a lot of the hatred comes from people that maybe haven't played it fully, because there is a lot of good in there. For me, the DLC was definitely the saving grace, but I still loved a lot of the environments, the weapons, obviously the music in Majula, a lot of the characters. There's a lot to love about Dark Souls 2, but I also understand the hate. Uh, Lus Lusamin would like to know why it took me so long to play FromSoft games. I honestly just never got around to them. I knew about Dark Souls 3. It came around the same time that I graduated high school and a lot of people were playing it. Frogmouth would like to know what are my top Top three favorite FromSoft bosses so far. That's that's a crazy one. Top three. Oh, just three. Okay, well, I don't know if I can rank them, but I have Gale in there for sure. I have to throw Ishin as well. And oh man, I feel like I gotta throw a Bloodborne one in there. For Bloodborne, it's very tied between Ludwig and Lawrence. And I know that might be a little bit controversial having Lawrence in there because I know he's hated by most, but it's literally my favorite OST in the game, <laughs> maybe even ever. Honorable mentions though, I gotta put Sister Frida in there just for the, the, the shock factor and the lore, the music, the cutscenes. It is such an incredible boss. Um, I gotta throw Nameless King in there, Ornstein and Schmo, Schmo. I still don't know how to say it to this day, Radon, Father Gascoin. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many, dude. We'll do a boss tier list in the near future. Next question comes from 22YFZ. Uh, if you were a boss in any of the Soulsborne games, which boss would you be? <laughs> well, we all know the answer. No, I'm just kidding. I'd probably be this. Okay, I'll stop. This one. Okay, no, but for real, I would probably be... You know what? I would probably be the Nameless King. Yeah, you're just badass. Solo Ronin would like to know why I'm always wearing a cap. That's a great question. And I have an answer for you. I don't really like my hair. I haven't really found like a, a hairstyle that I like. I usually grow it out and then I cut it myself, which makes it look even worse. So I have to like wear a hat for six months to get it back to normal. But normal doesn't really look that good. I have a very toxic relationship when it comes to my hair. Um, yeah. But at least I have cool hats. <laughs> Ryuzaki or Ryuzaki would like to know my educational background. Um, I went to college for a program that was called Advertising and Marketing Communications Management, which is a really long fucking name, but I graduated and they got me the job that I have right now, which is great. I went into it not really knowing what I wanted to do. I just knew that I wanted to do something in marketing and advertising, and then I ended up falling in love with video editing and graphic design. So that's what I currently do. And 
That's my educational background. Mr. Benny G or Benny G would like to know how I'm doing at the moment. Honestly, I'm doing all right, man. Thank you so much. How are you doing? Do you enjoy the suffering Souls games bring? You know what? Yes, I do. There's something about overcoming those challenges that just make you feel so damn good. Some encounters and some suffering sometimes can be a bit much, you know, a bit bullshit, you know, depending on the bosses or the areas or the games. But overall, the dopamine rush is like, it's insane. That's why we all do it. It's, it's, it's the best feeling on the planet. What I don't enjoy though, is when I'm stuck on a boss and the video has to go out in a few hours and I just know that I'm not gonna sleep that night. That I don't enjoy that much, but don't hate the game, hate the player. <laughs> it also makes you forget about like real life suffering. You know, when you're suffering in a made up world, it kind of makes you forget about all the other bullshit you got going on. So I do appreciate that. Ear fan or er, er fan? I'm so sorry that I'm butchering so many of these names. Uh, how is my name? <laughs> Speaking of names, how is your name pronounced? Much love, much love to you. So my full name is pronounced Matthias uh, and nickname is Matty, but people call me Matty. It's the same thing. What do you like to do aside from playing video games? Great question. My number one, I definitely love to spend time with my family and friends. I see my family every day, so that's a huge plus for me. I see my friends almost every single weekend. It is crucial to me. I love them to pieces and they are my rocks. They allow me to kind of just reset, refresh for the week ahead. And uh, yeah, we go to concerts together. We take little trips. We love to go thrift shopping. We love to play Pokemon Go. Um, add me if you play Pokemon Go, we can send each other gifts. And I also really like spending time by myself, whether it's watching YouTube videos, movies, uh, staring at the ceiling. In the past few years, I've really learned to appreciate kind of alone time. It's definitely something that helps me kind of deal with things and think of things. And But aside from that, I work for most of my day. I do YouTube for most of my nights and on the weekends, like I said, I love to see my friends, spend time with family and uh, that's really about it. Cream PH would like to know how many siblings I have. I have one brother, younger brother. He's uh, about to graduate high school, which is fucking crazy. And do I have any pets? I do not, but uh, my best friends have a cat named Kiwi and uh, she's basically part of the gang. I love her to death. I'll, I'll put a picture of her maybe. All right, we have two questions from Gail here. Uh, question one, if you could change some things about yourself, what would they be and why? Oh God. I don't really think I would change a lot of things about myself. Um, you know what? If I could change one thing, I it would probably be my, how do I even put this? I have a really hard time like caring about my health that makes any sense. Like <laughs> there are so many things that I know I could be doing in my day to day that I know would improve my overall like health. I mean, I just don't do it. I don't, I don't, I don't have any motivation to like make certain changes in my life that I need to take. Like for example, I've gained a ton of weight uh, since I started doing YouTube since I started working from home too. Like it doesn't really show that much on camera. Uh, but if you go back like 10 months ago, you can clearly see that I've gained some weight and you know, it's, it's okay. But I'm definitely getting closer to a point where like due to my age and height, like I should not be weighing this much. And I just kind of want to nip that in the bud before it kind of goes a little bit crazy because I don't really do a lot of physical activity. Um, I like to eat a lot. And you know, when you eat a lot and you don't exercise, you kind of start to gain weight. And uh, you know, I'm 24, soon to be 25. So that's definitely something I'd, I would like to change about myself. The motivation and drive to make some changes in my life that would, that would help me out. But that's about it really. Um, I'm pretty content with who I am, what I am. <laughs> and question number two, you seem like a short king. What? I could be wrong, so how tall? What? Do I seem like a short king? No fucking way. I mean, shout out to all the short kings out there, but drum roll please. Um, I'm actually 5'11 and three quarters, so I'm basically six feet tall. Yeah, I'm six feet. I'm actually quite a big dude. I'm six feet, over 200 pounds. Uh, yeah. That's that's crazy that you that do I look do I look short in the videos? 
Shit, I guess maybe, eh? That's really funny though. Appreciate your questions, Gail. Oh man, here's a fun one. Uh, your top five favorite fictional characters from movies or TV. Oof, number one would have to be Darth Vader, Anakin Skywalker, the greatest character arc of all time. Second, I would have to put Aragorn. Third, I would definitely put Tony Soprano. Fourth, I would definitely have to put Peter Parker or just Spider-Man in general. And last, but definitely not least, the queen herself, Daenerys Targaryen. All right, guys, so next up, you guys have been really wanting to see all the stuff that I have in the background. So let me, let me, let me take you on a tour. All right, guys, so this is the background. There's me. So that's my closet. That's the front door. This is just like a bunch of stuff that I have. That's my cool mom. That's me and my dad. They're just a couple of things that I have here. I have my Empire Strikes Back poster, some Japanese art, which it got kind of fucked up there, but I'm too lazy to fix it. Couch that no one sits on. And then the fun part. So actually, I got these two from Amazon. They're not the best quality, but they do the job, man. All right, on to this stuff. So we'll start from up here, man. I got the Millennium Falcon that I built it's out of made out of paper it's kind of falling apart but it's cool i got grievous obi-wan some comic books moving over i got the wizard himself I got jar jar that's actually a record that my uh homie j mike's got me got a couple of lord of the rings uh figures here that i've found like over the years i really like collectibles as you may have noticed but moving down here we have a george lucas in a stormtrooper outfit which is quite cool i have a japanese limited edition uh spider-man first three volumes of berserk it's all I've read, but I've absolutely fallen in love with them. I definitely want to read more of it. Then I have some like old VHS tapes that I found at some thrift stores again. And right here, I have my Bloodborne comic books and I have a copy of Dark Souls 1 that I recently found at a uh, pawn shop, as well as a brand new copy of Dark Souls 2 right here. Okay, that's what Dark Souls 2 does to people. Look at what you did. I picked this shit up. Yeah, this actually happens a lot from time to time. You try and like grab one thing and fucking 10 others like fall over, but. Moving on down here, I have uh, R2-D2 from like fucking years ago. Then I have this like cool Luke Skywalker. I have my Darth Vader saber, Batman, Superman. Uh, what else, what else? My Nintendo 64 with uh, Star Wars Rogue Squadron. I have Zelda, Ocarina of Time, Super Smash Bros, Super Mario 64, and Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Then I have some action figures that got messed up by the Dark Souls 2 incident here. Right here, I got some like stuffed people. That sounds pretty messed up. I have my Nintendo DS, my Game Boy Advance, and my Game Boy SP. And then down here, we just got some more fun stuff. This one's probably the funnest. Uh, we got Spider-Man versus Spider-Man. Uh, just pointing at each other. And then down here, I have my PS2 and my 360. And that's basically it, guys. That's the background. That is also my bed. This is where I sleep. This is also where no magic happens because, I mean... This is like a new corner that I have now. This used to be just like a bunch of shit that I would just like pile up here, but kind of have to make it nice for you guys. We have a giant Jar Jar poster that I found in a thrift store in Montreal and I just had to get it. I don't even like Jar Jar Binks that much. It's just, I just got it for the meme, man. I have my copy of Hercules. <laughs> These are just some of the games that I have from like, you know, when I was a kid and you know, later on. And I'm currently kind of on a bender of collecting PS2 games. These are some of the ones that I found. Um, some of my favorite ones from over the years. I also have some more VHS tapes here. It's been really into this one. I also got Viva La Bam. If you know Viva La Bam, we can be best friends. That's basically the room. This is my happy place. All right, guys, that is gonna do it for the q and I hope that you enjoyed it. Thank you to everyone that submitted questions. If I didn't get to yours, maybe we'll do it in the next one or ask it down below. I'm always in the comments section. Thank you all so much for being a part of this amazing community. You guys really are the best. Many games coming out soon. Liza P, Lords of the Fallen, and many others. So expect a lot. This is just the beginning. I really appreciate you all. Take care of yourselves, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.